Uh, it's time for Street Talk, your voice and your views on the issues in the news. Electronic eyes may soon be watching you driving through the streets of London. It's part of a controversial plan the government has unveiled to introduce a road user charging scheme. Once implemented, there would be static cameras capturing license plate details while global positioning system satellites watch drivers' movements. It may not be completely set up for another 10 years, but has already led to an electronic petition signed by nearly 2 million people who see this as an invasion of privacy. The government is hoping this will lessen congestion and travel times. Well, Singapore and Stockholm have already implemented electronic tagging systems. Carl in Mexico thinks this will need a stronger checks and balances approach. The bottom line is that this condition of surveillance makes it even more important to maintain democratic forms of government. One doesn't want to think about the consequences of someone like Joe Stalin actually having all of that personal information on everyone. And this news reminded Will in California of George Orwell's book, 1984. Remind me not to move to Britain. I'm fine with surveillance cameras in public places, but a system that is capable of monitoring your every move is Orwellian. Bob in the US thinks that there should be cautious use of such technology. It is too easy for the people in power to use systems like this in ways that are oppressive to individual rights. Given recent history, I would not trust the US government to use such technologies appropriately. Now over to Cuba, where the number of Catholics is growing, compared with diminishing numbers in churches across Latin America. Since Pope John Paul II's visit in 1998, relations between the Catholic Church and the Communist island have strengthened. Pope Benedict XIV plans to visit Latin America this month, but he will not set foot on Cuban soil. Roughly half of Cuba's 11.2 million population is Roman Catholic, even though the island was declared an atheist state in 1959 after the start of the Cuban Revolution. Religious freedoms are still a topic of debate on the island, though. Tom in California believes Cuban leader Fidel Castro wants it this way. Fidel, while under continuing U.S. threat, does not want to share political power with the church and feels it must be kept in its place. Santeria, however, is the major religion in Cuba as people seek a spiritual escape from a hard life. Nagi, in the U.S., sees faith as a form of escape. This may be a result of a decline in economy, political instability, or some other phenomenon. When the human condition worsens, people usually turn to religion as a solution to their problems. Michael in Massachusetts in the U.S. thinks this is a natural step after communism diminished. That some people have lost their fervor for communism, while others lost the fear they formerly had of the autocratic power of communism, has created the conditions for religions to grow in popularity in these once atheistic areas. Now, South Korea has just built the largest solar power system in Asia, producing 2.2 megawatts of electric power per day, supplying around 700 homes. It took South Korea's LG 11 months and $18 million to build the system. This is all part of the country's compliance with the Kyoto Protocol, and they hope this will lessen the use of fossil fuels to help combat global warming. Even with the largest sun-powered system, solar energy is less than 1% of the country's total power consumption. The government is making a strong effort to promote environment-friendly energy sources. Now, most of the people I know would think twice about jumping out of an aeroplane, even with a parachute. But there was a spectacular sight in the skies when dozens decided to jump together. Over 80 skydivers trained for more than a week to form a diamond shape while parachuting to the ground. It's really quite amazing. Have a look at this. Incredible, what coordination to think I know people who can't even walk in a straight line. That's it until next time. Do keep sending in your questions and comments and point us to anything interesting or amusing for Street Talk. Remember, what you see here isn't necessarily the view of Al Jazeera and some of the content's been edited, but for time and space reasons only. And that's the talk on the street. Get up, get up, get up, get up.